Hey everyone, what's up? So this is my SMT hot plate reflow oven made from cloth iron element screwed on to a copper plate and this whole structure is powered by AC and I have added an NTC to measure its temperature. The goal for making this DIY SMT reflow was simple. It's easy and cheaper to make a working SMT reflow hot plate instead of buying a proper hot plate. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I made this hot plate in few easy steps. Also check out this project page for getting code and other important stuff. Now let's get started. The melting temperature of solder paste depend on the flux percentage and the ratio of tin and lead which is in my case 63 by 37. The tin is 67 and the lead is 37. The tin lead solder has melting point from 140 to 270 degrees celsius higher. I bought this solder paste without checking the melting temperature. The solder paste with a lower melting temperature which is 170 to 200 degrees celsius should be used here. Also hit that subscribe button. These are the things that I used in this project. Irons element, copper plate, wooden board, AC cord, ESD mat and the rest of these part are for preparing the temperature sensor. The PCB which was provided by the JLC PCB, OLED display SSD 1306 at Mega328PU. 16 MHz crystal, 22 PF capacitor, 10K resistance, NTC 10K, 5 volt 1 ampere charger circuit, 3D printed enclosure box, potting compound, epoxy and hardener, Teflon wire, red, black, white, PCB for reflow, solder paste, and Arduino as ISP programmer setup. Here's the block diagram of this hot plate project. The hot plate is powered directly from AC supply. No relay has been added to the hot plate line for power cutoff or control. The reason for that is pretty simple. Adding relay to this setup means we need to monitor the temperature and cut the supply of hot plate whenever the hot plate reaches a certain temperature and then reconnect when the hot plate temperature goes down. On the iron's element, there is a mechanical part in iron which is this thermostat. The thermostat is an important component of an electric iron that regulates its temperature. When the iron reaches a certain temperature, the thermostat turns off the power of the iron. This mechanism consists of a bimetallic strip that is made from brass and iron. When the temperature of iron exceeds a certain limit, the strip begins to bend toward the metal with a lower coefficient of expansion. As a result, the strip ceases to be physically connected to the contact point. The circuit opens and the current ceases to flow. So the bottom line here is that iron already have a power cutoff setup that controls the temperature of iron. We only require a temperature monitoring setup that display that accurate temperature of the copper surface. For measuring the temperature higher than 150 degrees Celsius, I prepared an NTC based Atomega 328PU setup which displays the hot plate temperature on an SSD 1306 OLED display. In order to make this temperature sensor setup, I used a 10K NTC along with an Arduino Nano to set up a basic temperature sensor setup by following this guide. Setting NTC is pretty easy, we just need to add NTC with the same value resistance, in my case 10 kilo ohms, in series with NTC according to the given schematic. After finalizing the breadboard version, I prepared a minimal Atomega 328PU setup by using this PCB from a different project. I first added the necessary SMD component to the PCB which were mentioned in the schematic above.
Now the PCB that I'm using doesn't have a breakout point for OLED display. So I modified the PCB a little bit by cutting the copper traces of four connectors. And then I added VCC ground A4 and A5 pins separately to that connector by jumper wires. After that I added the THT component like the IC and bird strip. Next, I remove the OLED from previously made breadboard setup and connected it to the current setup along with a 10K NTC. After doing all this, the last step is to flash the bootloader in the Atmega 328PU and upload the code to it. And for that, I used my Arduino as ISP programmer board, which is an Arduino Nano flashed with the Arduino as ISP sketch. By connecting the SPI pin of this ISP programmer with any target microcontroller's SPI pins, we can flash the microcontroller. Watch this video of mine to learn more about this. I first burned the bootloader of the Atmega 328PU and then uploaded the main sketch to it. The end result was this DIY temperature sensor that displays the real-time temperature measured by the NTC. The main part of this project is the element setup. We can put the PCB directly onto the iron surface and it will reflow the PCB without any issues. But the iron surface area is not enough to reflow large PCBs. To increase the reflow surface, I bought a copper plate of size 150mm by 250mm by 2.2mm. My plan here is to add this copper plate onto the iron's element. The copper heat transfer rate is pretty great and it will be perfect for this project. I drill mounting holes in iron element and copper plate. With M3 screws, I secure both of them and made a huge heating plate setup. Three holes were for securing the iron element with copper plate and the four holes were for adding the copper plate onto the wooden base. As for the base, I have used a wooden board of size 460mm by 380mm by 20mm. I have drilled mounting holes in the wooden base according to the hot plate four holes and then use M4 screws, washer and bolt to hold the copper plate in mid-air away from the wooden surface. But before screwing all of them together, I painted the wooden board and then added ESD mat on it. Adding ESD mat here is not necessary. I added this because it's heat resistive and after reflowing any PCB, we can place that PCB which is still hot on mat and the mat won't melt. I use rubber adhesive to attach ESD mat with the wooden base. At last, I added AC connector for connecting the hot plate AC supply with AC cord.
To keep AC cord in place, I added a plastic part that hold cord in the place. After setting the hot plate on base, I added temperature sensor on base with screws. Now to power the NTC setup, we required 5 volt, and this setup run on the AC 240 volt supply. To get DC from this AC supply, I took 5 volt 1 ampere charger circuit and designed a custom body for it. I then 3D printed this body with white PLA and then prepared an epoxy mixture for potting the whole box in order to make a DIY isolated 5 volt power supply. The potting process begins when the substrate is placed inside the pot. A liquid compound is then poured into the pot, filling it and covering the device completely. I pour epoxy and hardener into two different paper cups, each of 30 ml, then mix both of them together. Epoxy resin stays liquid but when the hardener is added, its composition starts to change and it solidifies. After mixing the epoxy and hardener together, I place the charger circuit inside its 3D printed box and then pour the mixture into it. It solidifies completely after few hours and the end result was this hard isolated power supply. I connected this potted power supply with the temperature sensor setup and with AC supply according to the schematic. and our setup was basically completed. Reflow soldering is the most widely used method of attaching surface mount component to printed circuit boards. The aim of this process is to form acceptable solder joint by first preheating the PCB and solder paste and then melting the solder without causing damage by overheating. For the final checking of this process which is to reflow some PCBs on it, I will use two PCBs which are from my previous projects, the AKTiny85 Game Boy PCB and the Nano Leaf Project PCB. I designed this PCB in ORCAD Cadence and sent them to JLC PCB for samples. You can check them out if you need great PCB service for a low price. The first step here is to add solder paste on each pad one by one with a proper solder paste dispensing method. I used a broken tweezer to scrape little solder paste from the solder paste box. I have to add solder paste to each component one by one. This time it's easy as this PCB required only few SMD components. An ideal method for this situation is to use stencil which you can also get from JLC PCB. Another method is to use a decent solder paste dispenser which required a different type of solder paste that has lot of flux in it. Flux makes the solder paste less hard. In my case, the solder paste is pretty hard. Next, we have to place component in their assigned place one by one with help of sharp tweezer. I am using a 10 kilo ohm resistance of package 0805 here along with a 1 kilo ohm resistance of package 0603 and an indicator LED with same package. Also an A7 diode. Now we need to lift this PCB and place it on hot plate. Turn on the hot plate and wait for few minutes. After few minutes, the PCB start heating up as the temperature increases and when the temperature hit that peak of 270 degrees celsius, solder paste melt completely. Here's a close up shot.
I did the same process with the nano leaf PCB. I added the solder paste on the LED pads one by one which really took time and effort. But after this hellish work of adding solder paste to each pad, I placed SMD WS2812 B LEDs on their assigned location and put the whole PCB on hot plate for reflow process and the result was pretty nice. Hot plate did actually work. It's pretty usable for reflowing PCBs for project. It can even reach up to 300 degrees Celsius which can be used to reflow even metal PCBs. Overall I'm happy with this result. This hot plate is working properly, however, its temperature sensor didn't seem to work after when the hot plate reaches 270 degrees Celsius. This might be because I'm using a 10K NTC and 100K NTC should be used here. This hot plate currently required a reliable temperature sensor setup. If the DIY temperature sensor won't work properly, a panel temperature sensor module can be used here which cost around $15 to $20, but it can display accurate temperature readings. I will make necessary changes in this hot plate setup and make a part 2 of this project, so stay tuned for that. Leave a comment if you need any help and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys with the next video. Peace out.